This is Task Spoon, the series where I try to complete the collection log one random task at a time. After completing all the easy tasks, I'm ready to move on to longer and harder challenges as I attempt to conquer the medium tier. Welcome to Season 2 of Task Spoon. Hello everybody and welcome to episode 55 of the Task Spoon series. In the last video, uh, we did a bunch of boring stuff. We did some Tithe Farm and some Winter Todd and some Gnome Restaurant. We ended up by doing some easy clues, which were kind of fun. And then we rolled a task to get a Revenant teleport, which is why I'm geared up in my uh, stereotypical Revenant killing gear. I've never actually killed Revenants before, other than the two that I got the, or that I killed for the Revenant Ether task, which I ended up getting a bracelet of Ethereum on those two kills, as you can see here. Uh, so that was pretty lucky. Now I'm going to go in and try and get some Rev Cave teleports. Let's go do it! You can also get the Revenant Cave teleports by killing stuff in the Wilderness Slayer Cave, but I don't really feel like doing that right now. I feel like killing the Revenants is going to be more interesting and fun, so I'm going to try that first. I don't really know what I'm going to go and kill. To be honest, I've only ever been in the Rev Cave once, and it was to kill those two Revenant Imps that I did for the previous task, so... We're going to go and wing it and see what happens. Hopefully I don't die. So I really don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, obviously the higher level mobs have better drops, more likely to drop the item that I'm looking for. The lower level ones are going to be easier to kill and there's going to be less people. So I really don't know what the plan is here, but I'm just going to run through here and kill whatever revenants I see and hide from other people. I also have my bracelet of ethereum on and have it set to just absorb the ether from drops uh, from the revenants. So hopefully I can kill them faster than they use charges, uh, which looks like I am, as you can see by the 10 into 22 ether there. Uh, I see someone is over here, but I'm going to try killing this guy. Well, that's not great. Well, that's easy. I will say, the Rev Cave is not a place you typically want to be on Hardcore Iron Man. The amount of PKers in here that either have attacked me or looked like they were going to attack me, like that last guy, I think I didn't record the clip, but he <laughs> immediately, as soon as he saw me, put on a talk to Staff of the Dead, and I was like, you know what, I don't want to be there anymore. Um, yeah, I, I don't know, I don't know if this is the best. I'm just killing these two goblins over here. <laughs> They have a very low chance to drop my thing, but uh, it's safe. A small part of me would actually be okay if I just died to a PK or here, because like, it's my task, I gotta be here, it's not like I'm being greedy, but if I die, then I really don't have to worry about it, I can just come back here and who cares if I die after that. It's really just the first death that would suck. Also, I don't know if I showed this before, but if I'm killed by another player beyond 20 Wilderness, the only thing I really lose is my Bracelet of Ethereum. Everything else is like whatever. Uh, so that's not really the issue. It's really just the hardcore. I said very low chance to drop the thing that I wanted, being the Rev Cave Teleport. Uh, it's actually one in 47, I think it said, for just one teleport, and then like a one in 300 drop to drop one to five teleports. So it's not that low. I should get it within, you know, uh, not too many kills just sitting here, but it's definitely not the most efficient way to do this. Oh, I came up here to kill some of these hobgoblins and I actually got it. Nice. I can leave this hellhole. I was wondering why my game lagged, because it usually lags when I get the collection log, but uh, I had the rev caves ignored from something. I guess it was probably on leagues when I was doing Wilderness Slayer and I didn't want to pick up all the rev cave teleports. Uh, and I was like, why did my game just lag? Nothing dropped. But hey, cool, we're done. Uh, I don't know why I'm still killing these. Let's go get a new task. 
Okay, on the spreadsheet, complete that task that definitely wasn't terrifying at all. And let's see what we're doing next. <laughs> Back to the wilderness. We actually just recently had an Elder Chaos Druid task. I believe it was in episode 53, where we managed to get the Elder Chaos Hood in 14 kills. And yes, you're reading this correctly. It says 1 in 1,419. <laughs> we got very lucky. Uh, so either the robe or the top will do. And fortunately, even though this is in the wilderness, it's not particularly deep in the wilderness, and it's not really a PKing hotspot. I mean, there is a teleport near it, but it's fairly safe, I say, you know, optimistically. But yeah, we can just go and get started and hope we get as lucky as we did last time. Mixing it up a little bit from the last time I did Chaos Druids, I'm going to wear the Proselyte armor for more prayer bonus, so I don't have to go back and pray at the altar. For those that don't know, the Chaos Druids are, the Elder Chaos Druids rather, are at the Chaos Temple, which has an altar at it, so you can just pray mage the whole time, and they'll only attack with magic, so you're essentially immune to all of their damage. Uh, I also brought some, or I'm going to bring some Black Dehide to swap to if I get attacked, to help with the magic defense, so I can hopefully not get teleblocked and entangled or frozen as much. Uh, so this is probably what I'm going to go with. Got a bunch of food from uh, that Revenant's task, that the blighted food that you can only use in the wilderness. So might as well take that, just in case I do get attacked. And yeah, not much else to say. Just going to go and get started. With this setup, uh, because the Elder Chaos Druids are below 20 wilderness and I will never be sculled, this is all I could possibly risk. Uh, so I get to keep the main items that I want to keep, uh, these, whatever, I mean, I guess the herb sack is very important to keep, but, uh, I get to go to your gravestone for free, and the items that I'll lose are gonna be the glory, and that's about it. I can buy back the proselyte, I have lots of black dehyde, don't care about the rune gloves, everything else is just supplies, oh, and the adamant boots, again, I have, like, five pairs of those, so, yeah, this is what I'm gonna go with, let's hope I don't die. Okay, here I am, wish me luck. And I'm already lagging. Wonderful. Oh, and because I forgot to mention it after the end of the last task, I ended up killing two Revenant Orcs, uh, seven Revenant Hobgoblins, which I did get the teleports from, and 36 Revenant Goblins. So I would say right around the drop rate, to be honest, if you sort of average all the drop rates between the different enemies, not so bad. RIP, my guy. Thanks for the prayer, XP. Well, this isn't good. I can't take off Prey Mage yet. Maybe I can just run south. Splashing that is good.
You have been slain. Hello, Future Spoon here. Uh, this is about two weeks after this happened while I'm editing the video. I just wanted to go over. This is the replay of my death. And if you look up in the top right corner of the minimap, you can see the white dot when he logs in. I had my screen pointed towards the north entrance where I assumed most people would be running in from. But as you can see, the guy had logged in in the corner there. And there's actually a little uh, rubble area over here that there's a roof on. So even if I was looking at him, I might, I probably could have seen the skull through it, but it would have been hard to see him anyway. And as you can see, the teleblock block comes in. I didn't even notice until he got over here, obviously. That's when you can see me start to move. And I realized going that way wasn't going to work, but uh, I'm not going to replay the whole thing. But I just wanted to say, you know, it is what it is. He got me. Um, he actually was a pretty cool guy afterwards. I think I mentioned in a clip, but, uh, yeah. The other thing, I decided to try and run south over here because I thought he was a higher level. For some reason, I thought he was, like, 111 or 114 or whatever it was. And I think I actually right-click him somewhere around this point, and I noticed he's actually level 107, so running south really wasn't the play. I probably should have ran, uh, east towards Ferox, but... Either way, there was a lot of things I probably could have done to live, uh, including just bringing an anti-poison. If I didn't take any poison damage, I probably would have lived as well, including the final killing blow uh, being a hit from poison. So, yeah, back to the video. Like I said before, I knew I was going to lose the hardcore eventually. Uh, it's not really an option. I gotta do tasks in the wilderness, and that's just a risk that you have to take, so... It, it happened, you know. Like I said, I'm actually almost relieved a little bit. I didn't die doing something stupid like uh, Zolra or something like this person guessed, because I did just talk about the Zolra task, but, uh, you know, I, I died doing my task. I had to do what I had to do, and now I don't have to worry about dying anymore. Also, shout out to this guy. You know, he messaged me after. He said, sorry, I didn't see your hardcore Iron Man. It's all good. That's what the wilderness is there for. I, I said to him, only thing I'm sad about is you took the glory. Uh, because, as you can see here... That was my only glory. So, uh, we have a new problem. So here's the thing. I've officially lost my only glory, and there's no way that I'm gonna be doing combat stuff with a power amulet. I just, I, I can't be seen. It's a bad look. So, my new plan is to get the crafting level to make my own glories. Now, I'm currently 67 crafting, and to make an amulet of glory, you need 80. Uh, now you can obviously boost for that, and I'll probably end up going for 76 and using the, uh, what is it, the Sulyasep cap mushroom, whatever it's called, pie. I think I actually have one uh, in here. Yeah, half a mushroom pie gives you a plus four crafting boost. So I'm going to end up trying to go for 76 crafting, and I'll make pretty much as many glories as I can. I got 22 dragon stones here. I'm probably just going to try and make all 22 of them into glories. Uh, that way I can just use the teleports, charge them all at the same time, don't really have to worry about it. Recently, uh, before when I only had the one glory, I would save the teleports because I really didn't want to have to charge it, because charging one glory at a time felt terrible, and I would just end up teleporting to my house and then using the glory. It's a whole thing. I'd rather just have a bunch of glories and be able to use the teleports whenever I want. I'm gonna try and get 76 crafting boost to make glories. Now, that could take a while, uh, in theory. I would need nine crafting levels, which sounds like a lot, but if we go to the bank, I mean, even just looking at the gems, I have a lot of gems that I can do stuff with. Uh, probably not going to use the diamonds, because I don't really know, none of the diamond jewelry is that useful. I could make them into, like, bracelets or amulets and then alk them, but uh, I'm going to make all of the sapphires into either games necklaces or rings of dueling. I'm going to make all the emeralds into, or sorry, uh, rings of recoil, make all the emeralds into rings of dueling, make pretty much most of the rubies into dig site necklaces or pendants as you can see here i'm running a bit low on those but i will save some to make some bolt tips in the future and moving on from there if we go to the seaweed i actually have quite a lot of giant seaweed that i haven't used i don't think i have much sand but that's super easy to get just go mine it in the desert uh, we look at some battle staves here. I got 430 battle staves. I'm going to make some orbs with the glass that I'm going to make from the sand and the seaweed. Charge the orbs, make some battle staves, alk those as well. Get a big influx of money doing that. And we'll see where I get from there. I've done zero math. I have no idea how much experience I actually have in the bank. But I'm just going to go and do all the things. 
and we'll see how far I get. I'm such a freaking content monkey brain human where I die on my hardcore Iron Man where most people would be upset and I'm like, ooh, this is going to make for a good video. It's kind of funny because I'm sitting here and I realize that's the best way it could have happened. It would have sucked if I kept my hardcore status when I started to, to go do like bossing or something and I just died because I made a mistake on a boss. That's so lame. Dying to a PK or because I was doing a wildy task, that's that, that's exactly how I should die. And I know that sounds like copium, but like, I was literally just, I was sitting here making my gold bars at Blast Furnace here, and I was just thinking, like, I couldn't stop smiling. I was like, you know what, this is going to be, this is going to be good content. I, I don't feel bad at all, you know, and the guy even apologized afterwards. He was super nice about it. The whole interaction, I'm, I'm very happy with how it went. And there's so much less stress now. Like, when I was doing that Revenant's task, I was so afraid of dying. I could just go and do that. Like, it frees up so many options for me. I, again, I, everything I'm saying, it just sounds like complete copium, but I'm actually pretty happy with how that went. Oh yeah, also, I, I had to make some gold bars to make the jewelry that I wanted, and I figured while I'm here, I might as well just turn, like, all my gold, or maybe not all of it, but most of my gold into gold bars. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing first. Alright, here we go. 81 smithing. Uh, I don't I Turns out smithing gold is really good for experience. I understand why people do this. Uh, that's going to be all I'm going to do here. I just, I don't know, I was close to that level, so I decided to get it. But 1,700 gold bars is going to be way more than enough to make all my jewelry. So, we're done here. Next thing I'm going to do is... I'm kind of going to get all the supplies ready... And then go for like one big burst of experience. So first things first, I'm going to mine all the sand and get all the buckets of sand ready in the bank. And I'm also remembering now that I haven't done Lunar Diplomacy yet. Which means I can't use the Glass Make whatever spell. Super Glass Make. And I kind of wanted to do that with my giant seaweed. So we might end up taking an even bigger detour than I thought. Also, here's your reminder if you want to leave a comment for a tile marker in-game uh, with a short message, location, and a color if you'd like. I can put that down in-game for you. And the reason I'm bringing this up is I have a, a notepad on my desktop where I keep track of all of the tile marker comments that I haven't put down yet just because I haven't really gotten there in-game. And this one has been at the top of my notepad for the longest time because I, I can't remember what episode they left it on, but it was a long time ago, and I've just never been to the sandstone mine. So there you go, who's ever comment that was. Thanks, and you're welcome. I don't know. All right, I don't want to mine any more sand. I got 4,000 buckets here. Uh, we're going to see how far that gets me. Uh, not going to be enough to use all my giant seaweed, but it'll get me a good start, and I can decide how much more sand I want to mine later. And here we go with the first of my crafting levels, 68 crafting. Make blue dragonite chaps, alright. Uh, the other reason I forgot to mention that I wanted to get my crafting up was actually to make slayer rings. I bought the ability to make them a long time ago, but I never got the crafting level. And slayer rings would be really useful, just for general transportation, and when I go back to grinding slayer. So yeah, yet another reason that training crafting will be useful in the future. Nice. I finished making all my jewelry, so now I need to blow some glass to make some orbs to make the staves, and to make the glass, I need to do lunar diplomacy. So here I am, gonna go do it. Fun fact that I'm sure a lot of people that have played in Iron Man before already know, but figured I'd mention it. Uh, in this step of lunar diplomacy, you have to make a dream vial by adding Guam and Marantil to this special vial of water. And when you do so, it gives you 84 Herblore XP for your herbs, which is a lot more than you can get usually making potions with Guams and Marantils because they're a low-level herb. So if you have a lot of them in your bank, you can just make it, destroy it, go back to Baba Yaga in the house here, and ask for a new vial, go and fill it up, and put two more herbs in it. And it's a really efficient way to use, well not efficient in terms of speed, but efficient in terms of how much experience you get per herb for your Guams and Marantils, so. As you can see from the bank here, I don't have a lot of Guams and Marantils to use for this method, 
but if you do, it's pretty good. 84 XP per herb is a lot more than you get making potions, so... This room is so unnecessarily slow. <laughs> at least you don't take damage when you fall. But like, look at the path that- Last time I did this room, my path was literally straight down the left side. And it took me one try, because I start on the left side and I just kept going forward. This has taken me almost as many tries as possible. Because I start on the left side and I slowly went across and then uh, anytime I, I don't know if I can go forward, obviously I'm just going to try because that'd be the fastest way. But uh, this is one tile away from being the longest path imaginable. This room has taken me... Uh, and I actually have a clip of the first time I entered the room, which I ended up deleting. But I noted the time that I started recording at. And this room has taken me 11 minutes of this. It's so slow. Sorry, ran over. Please be this one. Please don't be the next one over. No! Like, look at- look at this path! This is- this is almost the worst it could possibly be! Alright, I think I just have to talk to this lady here, the Onero man. Okay, not gonna try and pronounce that name. We're done! Yay, we can go do super glass making. So if you don't already know this method, this is how it works. You withdraw three giant seaweed and 18 buckets of sand, cast super glass make, uh, there'll be some extra glass that goes in the ground. You have an open looting bag in your inventory, which allows you to pick them up without needing to bank and then pick them up and then bank again. And uh, you just repeat this until your looting bag's full, and then you deposit everything in your looting bag and repeat, repeat, repeat until you run out of materials, and then you have a bunch of molten glass. See, this is a good example. Sometimes you just get a bunch of molten glass extra that sits on the ground, and it's just easier to have a looting bag in your inventory. Uh, you do have to do this at Ferox, because for some reason this is considered in the wilderness, even though you're not actually in the wilderness, but it lets you use a looting bag here, so... Couple other things to set up to make this even easier. I have it set so the left click option for the molten glass in my inventory is deposit all. So I have to left click once there. I have the left clicked option on the giant seaweed to be withdraw one. So I click three times there. And the left click on the buckets of sand to be withdraw X, which I have set at 18. So I click once there. Makes it super easy. Uh, this menu entry swapper thing is insane. Uh, if you're not using it like this, then you're doing it wrong, because this makes the game way easier. I forgot to mention that the spell itself actually costs 6 fire runes, 10 air runes, and 2 astral runes, but because I'm using a tome of fire and an air staff, it only costs the 2 astral runes, which cost 50 coins each at Baba Yaga, so, uh, yeah, this is essentially, like, free, fast crafting XP. Obviously, I had to go and get all the materials. But comparing this to like anything else, it's actually insane how good this is. I forgot to reset my uh, XP per hour, but it says you can get up to 90k crafting XP just making the glass, not even using it yet. And then obviously I'll get way more crafting XP once I use it, and then I'll get even more crafting XP once I charge the orbs and use them on staves. So this is like three times crafting XP all in one method. So yeah, it's pretty great. Alright, 6,555 Molten Glass has been made. Time to blow some orbs. Now, I think I'm actually going to end up just doing all of them into orbs. Uh, they are slightly less experienced than the lantern lenses that I could make right now. But the lantern lenses are entirely useless for me, whereas I can at least use the orbs. So that's what I'm going to do. I've been planning out my crafting training for a while now. Uh, eventually, obviously, I would like to be able to make the even better jewelry, specifically like a Fury would be awesome. And one of the things that I was always thinking about was how I was going to do the orbs for my battle staffs. And originally, my plan was to get 70 agility and do probably the fire orbs through the Taverly dungeon. But now that I've lost my hardcore, uh, going into the wilderness doesn't matter. So I can do the easier faster, uh, less skill requirement, and uh, higher crafting XP method of charging air orbs in the wilderness. So that's kind of nice, uh, and almost definitely what I'm going to do after I'm done with this. Ooh, a genie! 
Wow, today is my day. Thank you, Genie. All right, got another level coming in. 70 crafting here. Pretty neat. Uh, I did the math, and with the amount of molten glass I have left, I have about 315,000 XP worth of glass, which will get me to level 73 or 4, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, then I have the staves on top of that after I charge the orbs, which will get me to level 75-ish. Uh, so I still need a bit more XP, but I have lots of giant seaweed in the bank. I could just go mine some more sand. Uh, it's not that big of a deal, but that's where we're at. Oh, I forgot to record, but there's 71. Oh, I can make my blue dragonite bodies now, too. That'll be a nice little influx of XP. And another level coming in. 72 crafting. That actually gives me the level to make dragonstone necklaces, so I could make some skills necklaces. I don't know if I really care about those. I don't have that many dragonstones, and I do want to make quite a few glories, but eh, maybe I'll do it later. 73 crafting. I've been complaining about my internet a lot. I don't know how many clips I'm going to include, but uh, I put this little ping graph up top left there so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. I don't know what's going on. It's like, fine, 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 and then just, like, massive lag spikes. My internet sucks. But, on the plus side, no matter how frustrating it is, now I don't have to worry about dying. This is my first time going in the wilderness since losing my hardcore, and it is so funny, the difference in, like, my mental state. <laughs> I took a, a dual Greg, my sword to cut the webs, and two monkfish, and if I die, I do not care. And another level here, 74 crafting, uh, dragonstone bracelets. I don't think I need a combat bracelet for anything. I don't actually remember where the teleports are on it, but maybe. I made 425 air battle staves that will alk for approximately 3.9 mil. So that is pretty nice. That'll actually put me over 10 mil cash jack for the first time. Oh yeah. So here I am, enchanting some jewelry that I made earlier, and I realized that I was going to get a magic level. Cool! So here's the situation. Uh, I have used pretty much everything that I can get crafting XP out of my bank. Uh, as you can see, cut all the gems, keep in a few because you never know when you need some gems, and the diamonds are for bolt tips in the future, I don't know. Don't really have any use for diamond jewelry, so just going to save them. Uh, you can see all the teleport jewelry I made up here. I also made some stuff like some phoenix necklaces because I needed some XP and some dodgy necklaces that I still need to enchant. But pretty much used all my jewelry, all my gems. I have used all of my flax. I made 2,800 bowstring with the spin flax spell on the lunar spell book. That was kind of cool. Uh, you can see the crafting tab here. I've used all my molten glass, all my buckets of sand, essentially. I still have some giant seaweed, so I think what I'm going to end up doing is going back and mining some more sandstone, getting a few more buckets of sand, making some more molten glass, making some more orbs, and getting the rest of my experience. Uh, I need 166,024 experience, I did the math, uh, to get two more levels, so that's probably what I'm going to end up doing. Oh yeah, and I made all the battle staves into air battle staves and then alk them all. I think I already showed that. Uh... But yeah, I think I'm going to end up going back, mining some more sandstone, getting some buckets of sand, and I hope that this 400-ish giant seaweed is enough. I need to do the math, but I'm pretty sure it is. So, that's where we're at. Sand. Glass. Orbs. One crafting level. And crafting level two. 76 crafting. We are done, sort of. Uh, I'm actually going to need to get another mushroom pie, because I don't think I'm going to be able to make all of my glories in the time that I have for one boost. So I'm going to go get that first, and then we will go make the glories. And maybe a couple other Dragonstone jewelry pieces too. Okay, I got two Soliusip caps. Hopefully I don't burn them. Okay, please don't burn them. Good. Good. Okay, here we go. Dragonstone amulets, finally. I'm gonna make, I think I decided I'm gonna make 20 glories and 
a one skills necklace, one combat bracelet, and then I'll have one dragon stone left in case I need it for something else. I don't know what I would need it for, but never know. And necklace. And bracelet. Nice. Oh, I didn't realize that you could string the amulets without needing the crafting level. That's why I got the other pies, is because I was expecting to have to boost to string them as well, not just make them. But apparently you don't need to do that. So I didn't need to get more pies. Whatever, now I have them. Well, this is it. Finally. Make the skills necklace. Make the combat bracelet. And we make the glories. Heck yeah. And now, because this is going to be really satisfying. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. Now, usually I like to end on completing a task and rolling a new one, but because of everything that happened in this video and the RNG nature of my current task, I think I'm just going to end it here and we'll get that Elder Chaos Rope piece in the next video. This video is probably already way too long anyway, so that's going to be it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like the video and check if you're subscribed. Both those things really help me out. And if you want to go above and beyond, maybe consider becoming a channel member like these people right here. The lowest tier is only $2 a month, and it really helps me out. And of course, a big shout out to my tier 3 Big Spoon channel members, Alchemist BTW, Ray Ray Benavides, and Jack Staumer for their continued support. I really appreciate it. With all that being said, that's going to be it from me. I will see you guys in the next video.